Welcome back. I'm Brett. This is Matt. We're here to talk to you about the Surface Duo 2. And in today's episode, we wanted to talk to you about the typing and the handwriting experience. This is all about input. Uh, I think it was back in about 2016, Microsoft bought a company called SwiftKey, which was a really big provider of um, keyboard software for Android and iOS devices. Um, they've integrated SwiftKey into Windows 11 now, which is really cool. But um, of course, this is going to be the default keyboard experience on the Surface Duo 2. So I've been using SwiftKey on the device for a bit. Um, Matt, have you customized your SwiftKey keyboard at all? I haven't customized it. I'm used to using SwiftKey on my um, Galaxy Notes where I used it all the time and swiping is one of my favorite one-handed way to put text in on a phone type device. And here on the Duo, that's worked really well. I, I do like the fact that when you're on a single screen app that the keyboard sort of is compact. It doesn't fill up the space. It's just nice and compact, which is really great. Sort of Swift. orients itself to the right or the left depending on which yeah. screen you're on, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when you are in dual screen mode, it does go to more of a BlackBerry style split keyboard yeah. ready for thumb based typing, which makes swipe not really work. Yeah, uh, yeah but, it doesn't because it's split across the two screens, right? Yeah, which makes sense. Yeah. It's probably not going to work anyway. Uh, if you go into the, um, into the portrait mode, um, it kind of puts the keyboard down the bottom. It's almost like a laptop keyboard, right? Yeah. So it, it kind of fills up a lot of space. Um, it's, it's a big keyboard when it's in that sort of portrait mode there. So yeah, again, um, that makes the swipe less effective, right? Because you're traveling more distance to get your keystrokes if you're using swipe. But yeah, what, what customizations can we do with it, Brett? Um, so look, out of the box, yeah, it's just going to be a pretty basic sort of keyboard layout. And I think it is a Surface Duo 2 specific optimized layout. Um, but you can go and download themes. So you could change the color of the keys. For example, I have um, the keys. I have a keyboard downloaded, like a, 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 um, a theme for the keyboard downloaded so that I can see... Uh, numbers and symbols behind the keys rather than just the keys layout themselves. Um, I have it set up so that it's in a, you know, in a different color. I've got it sort of a purple background mm -hmm. theme color for it as well. Um, and you could specify things like I want to see the number row across the top or I want to see some cursor arrow keys. There's a lot of customization that you can do on this, on this keyboard. So um, there are a few great little tips that you can use. These also work on Windows 11. Things like if you press and hold on the space bar, you can use that to navigate the cursor left and right. Um, double tap the shift key to put it in caps lock, things like that. Double tap the space bar to put a, stop, a full stop and a space after your, um, at the end of your sentence, things like that. Um, but yeah, press and hold on most keys will, will bring up a symbol. Um, GIFs and emojis, things like that are all built into the keyboard at the top. But there's even on the SwiftKey keyboard, some other integrations like translation integration with the Microsoft translation service and um, the tasks integration directly in the keyboard there that you can sort of explore. So there's a lot to, to look at in SwiftKey. Um, I found that I had to adjust the sizing of the keyboard, make it a little bit bigger to get comfortable with it. Um, for me, just the, the, the sizing just wasn't quite right for my, my fingers and my style. Um, but yeah, and you can even sort of customize in the settings how it appears across the two screens. So do you want that left and right bias? Um, do you want uh, the split keyboard when you're in the, the two screen mode, things like that? You can actually adjust those settings in the, in the keyboard app, uh, which is pretty cool. Have, have you used voice typing? Uh, I have a little bit. I haven't done a lot of voice typing work and that's a service I think on these devices that's provided by Google. I don't think it's a Microsoft specific thing, yeah. uh, but that works very well. Um, and the other thing that we talked about, you know, I think you touched on is, is handwriting. Um, so the, the interesting thing about handwriting recognition is, you know, Microsoft's been doing this stuff for, um, you know, over 20 years, probably actually closer to 30 years on windows. Uh, most people don't know that, but they've been doing it a very long time and they've got a pretty good handwriting system that's built into windows 11. So if you want to type with your handwriting, it's there. Um, there is a way to do that on Android with the Gboard keyboard, which is the Google specific, it's the one that Google make, Gboard. So if you go and download that from the store, actually, I, I just realized I haven't done that on this device just yet because I got a new one, but I've got to go into the App Store, into the Play Store, download Gboard, and um, you'll be able to press and hold on the keyboard icon in the bottom right corner, I think. Um, pretty sure that's the key. Uh, yeah, but we'll, bottom we'll... right hand corner, you just select it and it gives you your keyboard options. Yeah, so if you've got other keyboards installed, you can switch. And so what I've done, uh, what I had done previously on the phone is I had the Gboard keyboard set up to automatically be in handwriting mode. So I could just toggle between those two keyboards to go from handwriting mode to typing mode. 
Um, and yeah, Gboard it does a pretty amazing job of handwriting recognition. Um, uh, it's it's very easy to use. It's it's pretty easy to edit words and and those sorts of things as well. I think it's on par with what's on Windows 11, maybe even better in some areas. And being able to handwrite um, with the full size, you know, Surface uh, Slim Pen 2 or Surface Slim Pen, whichever. In fact, any Surface Pen works on uh, the Surface Duo 2. It's a lot better than trying to write with this little with stick the, that comes with your Galaxy stick, Note yeah. now. I've said before in other videos, but I do have a bigger pen for that. But of course, it's never with the device. Whereas with the pen cover on the Surface Duo 2, I always have the pen with me and it's a full size, good sized pen that makes handwriting actually possible. So probably in that portrait mode, um, yeah. yeah, handwriting recognition give, just gives you just enough space to be able to quickly write out a few things that are converted to text and typed into the application. So we'll demonstrate yeah, that in the video. I use that a lot. I mean. I haven't used it on the Duo yet because you've just told me about how to go and find it. It's been one of the things I've wanted to find because on my Surface Pro, like I, I'm away from my desk a lot and I write everything out through the tablet input panel yeah. rather than type it with touch. I find yeah. it to be much more productive than that. But obviously I use a keyboard at my desk, but when I'm away from my desk, I write everything. So that will be a great, I'm looking forward to trying out that Gboard and seeing how it goes. Yep. So um, yeah, so uh, there's lots of you know input possibilities here. Um, if you use a different keyboard on your Surface Duo 2 or any other Android device, tell us about it in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to hear some suggestions and try a few things out. Um, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe and get that notification going so that you can uh, hear about our next video next week, where we are going to talk a little bit more specifically about which one are we doing next week? The Microsoft Launcher. I had some notes on here. So uh, yeah, we'll jump into Microsoft Launcher for the next video.